Okay, Emblems of the Holy Spirit. This is the last, um, the last on this specific series, and then, um, and then we we have a we probably get a cover. I think there's one or two more small things, not small. One or two more things to cover with the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, and then we're looking to get started into the doctrine of the Bible. And so pray for me on that. <laughs> I feel like it's such a big topic. I, I want to do it right, but like I'm not Gail Rifinger or Bill Grady or any of those guys or Gene Kim or Bruckman or, I mean, like, goodness gracious, this is going to be, anyways, Amen. we'll see. But All right, so M of the Holy Spirit is part three. We've covered water, fire, wind, oil. Uh, and then this time we're going to look at rain, uh, dove, voice, and seal. Uh, okay, so let's jump right into it. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28. So the first thing is uh, dew and rain is another emblem of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Dew and rain. Dew, we'll read the verse and we'll pray and then we'll proceed. Dew and rain. Je uh, Deuteronomy 28 <clears throat> Look down at verse 12. Deuteronomy 28, verse 12. The Bible says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, give me the right words. Give me the wisdom, Lord. Just uh, get me out of the way, Lord. Hide me behind the cross. I pray that you'd use me for your glory, Lord. I pray that this message would be a blessing to the church. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, the obvious cross-reference to this verse is, is going to be over in Matthew, where Jesus, where God is the, the Father that he, gives, he knows how to give good gifts. And what is the gift that he speaks of in the Gospels? The Holy Spirit. And so this is a physical promise to Israel, but, but we, can, we can draw a spiritual application here and say that this is a picture of the Holy Spirit, of the blessing of the Holy Spirit that God gives. Come on. Uh, so, and, and um, you know, this is dew and rain, right? Um, yeah, heaven, to give the rain unto the land. And this specifically talks about rain. There's other verses about the dew uh, dropping as well and kind of similar phraseology. Um, but, uh, but it's a picture of the Holy Spirit. And you think about the Holy Spirit, you think about rain in particular, uh, it's similar to water. It's refreshing, it's abundant, it fertilizes, it has a lot of similar, it is, it's water, right? So there's a lot of similar characteristics. We don't want to like just totally rehash all those points. But there's one particular one that I thought was really interesting and unique to, to do in particular um, that really uh, exemplifies this. So look at 2 Samuel chapter 23. I thought this was super interesting. Second Samuel chapter 23. This is dew. Because the, the Deuteronomy 28 talks about the rain, but a similar imagery comes on with the dew. So look at Second Samuel 23. <clears throat> and down in verse 4. The Bible says, and he shall, oh, this also, this actually says rain. I thought it said dew. All right, anyways. Um, and he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by, the, by clear shining after rain. Again, and you can, you can picture this. This is, um, this is dew also kind of does the same thing, right? It'll give the grass a shine. And when that sun rises and hits it, it glows, right? It glows. And think about, think about this. Um, over in uh, Exodus 34, what happened when Moses met with the Lord? He came back down from the mountain, and his face was glowing. His face was glowing. He had the Holy Spirit. He, was, he had the Spirit in him, and he had an encounter with God. The sun shined, and he was glowing, just like when you get that water on the, on the, on the grass, and the sun hits it, and it glistens. So the, the picture, like, it, it really fits. It really fits well. So dew and rain in the Bible can sometimes picture the, uh, can picture the Holy Spirit. And if you look throughout the Old Testament, there's all these examples. Am I going to get in? Let me see if I can stay here on my, no, I'm not. Yeah, what? 
Yeah, I thought about going to that. I was looking at that verse. So in Exodus chapter 16, what happens is the dew falls in the night, and then the manna falls after that. And doesn't that so perfectly fit what happens, you know, where the Holy Spirit shines light in someone's heart to receive the good seed of the word, the manna from heaven, and it, and it, and it takes root in the, man, in, the, in the person's heart, and the soul is saved. I mean, man, that fits so perfectly. Um, how can they receive the manna from heaven if they have not first got the Holy Spirit? Why? Because he gives us discernment. He gives us understanding of the scriptures. We can't receive the manna from heaven unless we've got the dew. Yeah. Right? So that fits well as well. And I, um, I didn't want to just go too crazy on this, but, man, that's, that's such a beautiful picture. Exodus 16. That's Exodus 16, the bread chapter. <laughs> It, the Holy Spirit has to, um, like, you can't understand the Word of God without the Holy Spirit. And so a lost man, when they in order for them to receive the Word, the Holy Spirit's got to open their heart. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, not that they have the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit until salvation, like, okay, but that initial encounter with, with God's Word, it has to be the Holy Spirit that shines that light in order for them to receive it. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, so then, and then, and then, along these same lines, um, <coughs> a judgment, a common judgment in the Old Testament is a lack of rain. And if you go over in Zechariah, we're not going to go there, but in Zechariah, it talks about the millennium and the millennial kingdom. Those nations that refuse to go up to worship, right. what does God do? He holds back the rain, yeah. and. Um, uh, a picture of that is going to be the tribulation. Why? Because he's going to take the Holy Spirit away in, in the rapture. Yeah. And there's going to be a spiritual famine. Yeah. Yeah. No more rain. Yeah. No more dew. So it's pretty consistent in Scripture. Um, <clears throat> so dew and rain. What's that sounds what? awful. Like <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> it's judgment. <laughs> judgment doesn't sound fun to anyone. Oh <laughs> okay, so then do that's doing rain, and then there's the dove. This one's pretty straightforward. Matthew chapter three. Matthew, we're going a little bit fast, but I kind of want to get through this so I can um, have more time for the next service. Matthew chapter three. <coughs> and down in verse sixteen. We all, uh, I, I mean, I think we're all familiar with this verse. This is a pretty famous verse. <laughs> uh, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. So, like or as, maybe like a simile, making a comparison, using things, imagery, right? Okay. <laughs> So, Holy Spirit, like a dove. So, there we have one verse. A dove pictures the Holy Spirit. Okay? Um, <clears throat> there are some interesting attributes of a dove that I think is worth talking about. Just a moment here. A dove is gentle. And also, um, yeah, a dove is gentle. So, look at Matthew chapter 10. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10. Verse 16. Bible says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And the Holy Spirit is gentle, you know. And the way the Holy Spirit leads, he's gentle. He uses subtle things. Think about like Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. And it talks about the, um, the rod, you know, comforting us and, and guiding us. He guides us gently through uh, the wilderness through the dark times, and I'm, the Holy Spirit is gentle. He's gentle. He's gracious with us. Uh, in math, in Galatians five, we know this. It talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and one of the fruits is gentleness. Yeah. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is gentle, and that's one of His fruits in you. If the Holy Spirit is in you, He should be producing gentleness in you. Uh, another thing is this was I thought this was incredible too. Again, the picture is amazing. A dove, and by you know really and most birds <laughs> um, but 
A dove is a bird, so this works. Uh, it's able to see hidden things that we can't see. A dove is able to see hidden things. So look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Uh, the bir birds have, have incredible vision. Birds have incredible vision, and doves are way up, pretty up high on the list there. I think, I think the eagle wings or something like that is like the best of the best as far as the vision of birds. But, yeah, but doves, man, doves can see. And birds, in general, they can do things like they can see the stars during the day. Uh, birds, any kind of bird, pretty much, as, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but doves definitely can. <laughs> they can see the, the stars during the day. And so um, how can they, they navigate the whole earth on a regular, like in their cycles, right? They navigate over miles. You're like, well, how in the world do they do that? Well, they finally figured it out. Maybe they, maybe, maybe because they can see the stars. Um, uh, you know, maybe, I mean, obviously there's, there's the instinctual aspect of it as well. Like, I mean, I don't know what, how the Lord designed it, but they can see the stars. We use the stars to navigate the earth. They might as well, they might too. Um, but, but doves can see hidden things. They can see more colors than we can see. They can see more, they can, as they, they can see the UV spectrum of light that we, part, they can see into that UV spectrum that we can't see. And so there are things, um, like there might be something on a, on a surface that, shows up only on the UV spectrum that we couldn't see, the bird, a bird w like a dove would be able to see that. And so they see more colors than we do. Um, they have, they see, um, y they have, they have like 300 and like 20 degree vision or something it's ridiculous like, like that. Like, uh, it's not like an owl, like an owl can completely turn his head all the way around. The, the, the doves got the eyes on, on two sides, and so they can see almost all the way around them, but not, not quite entirely around them. They can see things that we can't see. <laughs> it's real hard to hide from a dove. <laughs> and, uh, and so look at 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. I thought this was a pretty fitting, passage, fitting verse here. Uh, verse 7 says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his stature. These are all things that we can see, right? Uh, because I have refused him. Uh, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The Holy Spirit can see things, sees things differently than we do. And so thank, thankfully the, the Holy Spirit guides us because he can see things that we can't see. Praise and he can, he can see the hazards that we can't see yet, and he can help us to navigate around those hazards. He can see the hidden things. Um, okay, so a dove pictures the Holy Spirit. Another thing that pictures the Holy Spirit in the Bible is voice, the voice. Look at Isaiah chapter 6. This is, I, th I find this to, to be fascinating, fascinating. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 6. I'll have to find Isaiah. It's somewhere in the Bible. <laughs> Right there. Chapter 6 and verse 8. The Bible says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, or who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Uh, a voice, the voice of the Lord, is the Holy Spirit is, is, is the voice of the Lord. If you think about 2 Peter chapter 1, and uh, verse 19 to 21, it talks about holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. We know the words, that's Jesus Christ. The voice that carries the words, that's the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, now if you look at, look, turn over to Matthew chapter 10. Here am I, send me. You think about over there in, I think, Acts. Um, Philip was sent by the Holy Spirit. Here am I, send me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just to tie that into, tie into to Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. The Bible says, For it is not yet, for it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. See that? The voice 
speaks, that voice is the Holy Spirit. The words we know are Jesus Christ. He's the word of the Lord, John chapter 1. Yeah, sound is carried by wind. Exactly. It's, it's so many layers. Sound is also carried by water, too. You, 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 uh, especially the low, the low frequencies, the bass frequencies, they can go through, they go through travel through water exceptionally well. <laughs> um, Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a voice speaks, and um, and again, it was the it was it, this the word of God through the through the through the prophets was that that was that was through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and that's Second Peter chapter one, verse nineteen to twenty one. Um, for prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay? So a voice speaks, a voice guides. Isaiah chapter 30. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 30. And down in verse 21, the Bible says, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. The Holy Spirit guides. In John 16, 13, we're familiar with this verse, it says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit guides, a voice guides, the Holy Spirit guides, a voice speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks, he's the voice of the Lord. Uh, and then a voice also warns, look over at Hebrews chapter 3, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 3. Yeah, absolutely. Hebrews chapter 3, and we're going to look down at verse 7. The Bible says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, when I was grieved, with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Who's doing the warning there? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. A voice is used, to, it, it warns. A voice can be used to warn. Uh, and then similarly in um, John 16, let's look at that verse. Actually, let's look at that verse. John 16. In John 16, Jesus Christ is telling, he's getting ready to go, and he's telling them that he's going to send the Holy Spirit, and this is what the Holy Spirit's going to do. And look at what the Holy Spirit does. In, in John chapter 16, verse 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. That's Jesus Christ leaving. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. That's the Holy Spirit. But if I depart, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, unto you. And when he has come, this is what the Holy Spirit's going to do, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. The Holy Spirit is going to be warning the lost about the judgment of God. Okay, so then, last thing. A seal also pictures the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, down in uh, verse 30. This is uh, one of the doctrines of salvation that's really important is we receive the seal of the Holy Spirit at salvation. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, the Bible says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed... Amen 
unto the day of redemption. You're sealed at salvation by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a seal. Yes. Okay, and so um, a seal, uh, and what you know, a seal authenticates something. You know, when the devil comes walking around and he sees that seal on you, you're marked. You're a child of the king. And so, so he'll see that seal, and, 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 and he's got to get permission. You know, like Brother Grady draws that picture, that little circle inside of a big circle. That's us. And, and anything that comes in, God's letting it in. Um, we're sealed. He's got to go up like he did with Job and say, Hey, Lord, I want to mess with this guy right here. Can I do it? And God says, Well, this guy needs to grow, so yeah, go for it, you know. <laughs> Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. A seal authenticates and a seal secures. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, turn to Ephesians chapter 1, read a little passage here. Uh, verse 13, it says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And this is the function of the seal, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Amen. Brother Daniel, I know you recently bought a house. You had to give earnest money. And that earnest money went into an escrow account. And it, it, it told all the parties involved that this house was going to be yours and no one no one else could have it unless one of the, you know, various exceptions that defaults the whole thing, right? Um, but it secures the, uh, the purchase until all the paperwork and all the other details can be dealt with. And so uh, the Holy Spirit is our earnest, and it secures the purchase possession, which is us, until the redemption which happens at the rapture, when God re redeems his purchased possession, he's bought us, that, that Holy Spirit is the earnest. He secures, he's securing his purchase by sealing us by the Holy, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that seal secures and authenticates. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise so um, that concludes my, uh, the emblems of the Holy Spirit series.